Hi everybody, it is October 30, 2017. Chemtrails has nanobot mind control already begun. I know that a lot of you know that they are spraying nanobots, this, uh, these, this nanotechnology, nanoparticulates that they can spray into the atmosphere and we can breathe in and not even know it. And these nanobots could be controlling people's brains. Wow. Now that's pretty far out, isn't it? What you see in this video is a nanobot encapsulating a neuron or a synapse or other nerve endings and bridging with synapses. Watch this. This is what we may have breathed in already. Now, it's hard to imagine that that could be in our brain, but it's actually true. Uh, it's all, this was only a simulation, but accurately summarizes everything that has happened in the past decade. This allows complete control of the host body, your body, remotely. They can remotely control our brains with these nanobots. The basic idea consists of a set of nanowires tethered to electronics in the main catheter such that they will spread out in a bouquet arrangement into a particular portion of the brain's vascular system. Such an arrangement could support a very large number of probes in the millions. In the millions. What's the purpose of chemtrails? You know, I still see comments where people think that there's only one particular purpose, like blocking the sun. Yes, they are spraying the planet to reduce global warming. Or those who believe that it's only for depopulation, spraying of the heavy metals and the chemicals to, uh, to destroy our immune system. There are so many different aspects to all of the agendas that are taking place. But chemtrails, yes, blocking the sun uh, and superheating the atmosphere in order to create earthquakes and steer hurricanes. The atmosphere needs to be more conductive for electricity. So installations such as HARP or other installations HARP-like can work their magic. So the chemtrails spray barium and aluminum, among other things, to create a more conductive upper atmosphere. The health erosion is not just the breaking down of our immune system, um, though that in itself could induce an awful lot of medical issues that so many people now have due to their breathing in all of these uh, chemicals and heavy metals climate modification, and nanofiber propagation to universally install these bio appies, these nanobots, to spray everyone with nanofibers that we are breathing in. So here it says, these fibers cannot be put into the food supply or given in some other way. The uptake across the population would take forever and not propagate very effectively. And I'm going to go into these nanoparticulates that we are actually eating, that we have been ingesting for a very long time. But first, I'm just going to play a very short clip of this video, the nanorobots inside you. 
So, so this is basically what is what's going on in the cells right now. These are different fibers assembling, disassembling the cells. What is this is a this is a, a, a molecular machine that walks around in your cells right now. It's called the kinase and transports things. So for example, if things want to move around your cells, they don't just float around randomly. They I, actually, I like actively that. moved around with little machines, little robots, nanobots that power your cells. Um, what you see here is actually the, uh, an amazing machine coming out of this little course, which actually assembles other machines. This is like the factory floor of your cells. It's called the ribosome. It reads your RNA. RNA is, uh, trans uh, comes from the DNA. It's translated into RNA, and then it basically uh, gets read out by uh, this ribosome. And they make new machines, which then do other things. There's all kinds of machines in the cells, things that rotate, things that walk, things that make other machines, things that read RNA, things that copy DNA, that Open a shot. Let's shot, look at this again for what we talked about. Can we look at it a second time? I, no. I, I, first of all, how fast is this in your life? All these things going on. Oh, some, some of the things can happen quite fast, some kind of slow. And that's actually interesting thing with an asteroid. You can create all kinds of time scales depending on how many pieces have to act together. Some things can well, happen little guys in nanoseconds, some in milliseconds, some in microseconds. Um, you know, they, they're actually. Um, they make steps in the kind of millisecond range, I would say. In like what? Like milliseconds, a thousand of a second. And a little so bit. you can have this move. So it's actually faster than that. that. It's much faster move. than that. So they made it kind of look like This is a garbage. Room. That big what sack is this cell garbage. And he's going to take it up this tube. But it is going to take it up. Yeah, yeah, there are some machines that walk to the, from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell to kick garbage out. And others that go from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell to bring the good stuff in. So they're specialized machines. They only walk in certain directions. Is this, what about the All right. Um, I will link below to everything. You can watch uh, this entire video. But if these little machines inside us can affect our cells by cleaning them out, taking the bad stuff out, and putting the good stuff in, you know that they can also be used to put bad stuff in and take good stuff out. And that is the danger of nanotechnology. It really is very concerning as to who is using this technology. All right, so this um, nanoparticulates in our food, engineered nanoparticles in consumer products Understanding a new ingredient. This was. Uh, this is on our government um, site. It's the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health, and it was posted in 2011. New ingredient? No, unfortunately, if you do the research on these nanoparticulates that they have been putting in our foods, the food packaging, in so many different products, it's been going on for way uh, longer than, let's say, just 2010 or 2011. They've rolled out this technology quietly. It was quietly proliferating in the United States on store shelves. Despite nagging questions, that's our government, they're nagging questions about the safety of these synthetic nanoparticles and the products that contain them. And this, these nanoparticulates in our food are used to improve the taste of our food, the texture, the nutrition. These nanoparticulates, they say, can operate inside us in ways that can improve the nutritional value of the things that we eat. And it also improves shelf life. Can you imagine? Can you imagine these, this nanotechnology operating inside you? Genetically modified organisms took over our food supply before most of us even knew it.
nanotechnology, nanoparticulates being used in food packaging and in the foods themselves, nanoparticulates actually sprayed on our fruits and vegetables, you know, that waxy substance that you can't get off apples now. Well, guess what? They contain nanoparticulates. Um, and according to this 2011 paper uh, posted on our National Institutes of Health's website, they say that it will take years before any official decision is made as to the labeling or the banning. Well, they haven't got to it. It's now 2017. They rolled this technology out before they even knew it was safe. And studies have shown that nanoparticulate titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, which happen to be common nanoparticulates used in our foods and our uh, food packaging, which leaches into the food. Studies have shown with mice, the mice exhibited DNA and chromosomal damage and inflammation. Another study revealed mice with genital for malformations, neurologic damage, and changes in gene expression in the brain because these nano particulates are so small you couldn't possibly see them just with you know the naked eye. You'd have to use a super, super um, microscope. But they cross the blood-brain barrier as well as the placenta. So dangerous. But another study revealed that they are toxic to the human brain and lung cells and lung cells. This is a very good article. It's very, very long. I will link below to it. I hope that you come over here and read it and you will get what you have been uh, ingesting for a very, very long time. These nanoparticulates also make us more conductive to electricity. Think about the, micro, uh, the microwave frequencies the electromagnetic frequencies that we are saturated in with conductive particles inside us that we are breathing in the nanobots as well as eating and in this study it also states that it is very difficult to detox these nanoparticulates so, if you can control all of these nanobots and if you could control the nanobots that we may be eating, um, then we can be remotely controlled. Um, these nanoparticles deposited in cells and tissues, they make their way right inside the cell, right inside the tissue and right inside our brain. And scientists have said that they pose a formidable challenge. Nanoparticulates pose a formidable challenge because nano sized particulates change their properties change the properties they exhibit when macro-sized, but they don't even know what the changes are. They have rolled out this technology without any safety study. Nano particles may be ingested through drinking water, food additives, atmospheric dust on food, toothpaste, dental fillings, implants. Ingested nano particles can then be absorbed through Pyre's plaques or small nodules 
in intestinal tissues that are part of the immune defense system if nanoparticles enter the digestive system and proceed into the bloodstream they could move throughout the body and cause an awful lot of damage so do we ever in the United States use that precautionary principle? No, we don't because it's a multi-billion, no, multi-trillion dollar industry, nanotechnology. Get it out because we can make money. And we don't care how dangerous it is to the public. Don't think that those elite globalist psychopaths are eating any of this. Yes, um, these nanoparticles equipped with new chemical and physical properties, when they become nano-sized, they cause unexpected toxicity and create an awful lot of health problems for all of us. Re researchers found nanoparticles in six of six U.S. baby formulas tested. Nano particulates? Babies, infants are drinking? Their brains? So soft? When you think of these nano particulates that can easily penetrate our adults' blood brain barrier, these infants are. All, th th those nanoparticulates are just making their way into infants' brains. So when studies have revealed that these nanoparticulates have caused DNA and chromosomal damage and inflammation to mice, think about what they are doing to children. This is so outrageous it's it's really uh, we're, 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 we're gone there's nothing in this country that is healthy anymore unfortunately organic food organic farms are also sprayed with toxic chemicals and heavy metals from the geoengineering from all of the chemtrails but yes nano particulates in our food, it's been flying under the radar, but GMOs were like that in the first few years. We didn't know that Monsanto was taking over the food supply. So, as for how other countries deal with nanoparticles in food, the European Parliament is working toward a moratorium on novel foods containing nanomaterials. France, Belgium, Denmark, They've implemented mandatory registries for nanomaterials, and the European Union has implemented a nanofood labeling, labeling regime, though none of that protects the public. It just informs them that they're going to be eating nanoparticulates. But in contrast, the U.S. has not developed any mandatory regulations or safety assessments for nanomaterials used in food or consumer products According to the Friends of the Earth report, um, it is important for U.S. customers or consumers to know that manufacturers are not required to list nanomaterial in ingredients on product packaging in the United States. We fought for, what, two decades to get GMOs labeled? Just get it labeled. We weren't fighting to get it out of our food supply, nanoparticulates. It's in um, dietary supplements. It's in products like sunscreen. Nanoparticulates permeate skin, gets right into the bloodstream. All you have to do is wipe on that sunscreen. Sunscreen. Uh, but it's on our fruits and our vegetables and oh my god it's really quite amazing but yeah the nanobots the nano sized sensors I posted videos on this a whole lot of people have posted 
videos on this. It's a trillion dollar market and who is mostly involved? It is Hewlett Packard MEMS Micro Electro Mechanical Systems that we have no doubt breathed in Hewlett Packard behind the dumping of nano sized sensors all over all over the earth. It's the big data necessary for complete control over everything on the planet, including the human being. It is essential for the Internet of Things. You've got to have sensors on everything so that they talk to one another. But these uh, sensors that we may have already breathed in from the dumping of these sensors into the atmosphere to literally permeate the Earth to be in our water, to be on our persons, to be on our homes, to be on every product imaginable, to be in wildlife. It is the control of everything, wildlife tracking, climate monitoring, uh, and all of these industries already have sensors on everything. Today, sensors are collecting information on virtually every aspect of daily life, including wireless telemetry, energy meters, weather data, biological and chemical experiments, and device location. This is in addition to the already significant IT data that organizations' equipment already generates logs, monitoring information, security flows. Humans and machines are generating data so quickly that they dwarf the growth in traditional and structured information. And humans merging with machines, transhumanism, very, 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 very real. So humans and machines, I can't get my uh, highlighter to work on this uh, PDF, but what is it? What, what are the implications of all of this? These nano sensors and the sensing ecosystem for collecting and communicating and storing and analyzing data. Well, it means trillions of dollars for those involved in their creation and then proliferation, distribution, and then all of those who are involved in the data collection and storing and analyzing, it means that everything will be controlled. Literally. Your own self, everything that you do. When you just think about a few implications of this kind of technology, the big data technology, when you have sensors on your refrigerator and you have sensors with every product that you buy in a store, first of all, they will know everything that you are buying and they will know everything that you put in your refrigerator because there are sensors in refrigerators and the sensors of the products that you buy that you store in your refrigerator, that sensor in your refrigerator talks to the sensors on the products that you put in your refrigerator. They will know exactly what you are buying. They will know exactly how you are consuming the uh, products in your refrigerator. They will know how much milk you are consuming. They will know when you are throwing it out. They will know when you purchase another gallon of milk the smart meters already, already tell government and utility companies exactly how much electricity that you are using, in what rooms, what you are using that electricity for. They know when you are home. They know what room you are in. 
They know when you leave. And if you use too much of that electricity, well, they can control that smart meter on your home. They can reduce your electricity. They could fine you for using too much electricity. Water sensors, water meters, smart meters. That will allow our government as well as corporations to know exactly how much water you are using. And if you're using too much, they can shut it off. They can ration the water. Or they could fine you for using too much water. Sensors um, on every product that you buy and how quickly you are consuming them. Insurance companies, that data is going to insurance companies. Insurance companies can deny or approve medical claims based on the products that you are buying, what you are eating, how much you are eating. They can uh, adjust your premium on maybe one day that you buy potato chips and, and uh, Diet Coke. Sensors in your car, they're already in your car. GPSs in your car allow our government and corporations to know exactly where you are, where you are driving. Are you driving to a bar? They know if you are accelerating very fast, if, if you are speeding, if you stop short, how many times you stop short, and that data available for insurance companies can determine your premiums. Sensors in prescriptive medicine, in cigarettes, uh, uh, on alcohol, they will know how much you drink, whether you're entertaining, if you buy a huge amount of alcohol for uh, you know, one particular time. But the fact that we have sensors in our own body, they can be used as uh, tracking devices, which will allow them to know exactly where we are going, every step we take, and how many steps we take. Are we exercising? But they will also be able to know exactly who we are associating with. This is very dangerous technology, and it is leading us into uh, a 1984 Brave New World scenario on steroids. And unfortunately, guys, it's here. It's already here. And that is truly the scariest part. They have done this without, certainly without our consent, but even without our awareness. These sensors have already been dumped by Hewlett Packard. Whether they have dumped billions or trillions, we don't know. But this, uh, this New World Order that is so, it is tyranny, uh, tyranny on steroids. The absolute control over every, every human being on earth. The loss of all of our freedom and the loss, it, it, these nanobots in our brains, that's the loss of our free will. But it's here already. So when you think about you know, all of these experiences that you're having with people that you can't get through to them, that they're acting in, in rather immature ways or saying things, they're so, like, you, you just can't understand you know, how it could be possible that people say the things that they do say. Uh, when you see a, a huge amount of relationships breaking down, families, uh, turning their backs on other members when they are in need of help. Um, we're seeing behaviors 
that are, I think, unprecedented, uh, though it's unprecedented on the scale with which we are seeing these behaviors. We've seen these kind of behaviors in people that are very damaged souls. But now we're seeing it kind of across the board. More and more people acting in ways that we we really can't understand. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense that adults are refusing to look at facts and evidence and, and uh, calling us names without even checking out what it is that we are saying. Are, are they being controlled? They could be. They could be because this nanobot bot technology, uh, you do some research and you will find so much information about it and they have been on it, research and development, for decades. Anyway, guys, I will link below to all of this information. And I hope that you circulate the information. Um, though I have to say, at times when I say that, I, I, I wonder, I wonder at this point if it's even possible to get through to people anymore. I wonder at this point if I think knowledge is power and I think knowledge is very good and I think if let's say I am feeling you know uh, a certain way that is uncharacteristic then I can at least know that I may be uh, feeling this way because it's externally induced. We know these frequencies coming from Gwen Towers, micro uh, uh, cell phone towers, cell phones, smart meters, Wi-Fi can make us feel. They can induce uh, feelings by raising the frequencies or setting them at particular um, hertz. So we know that. And if we suddenly start feeling in a way that we should not be feeling, then at least we can kind of wait it out and and not be confused. But nanobots in our brains, and they have the ability to remotely control those nanobots in our brains, we're looking at a technology, unprecedented, um, and it is essential for everybody to have this kind of knowledge. How do you detox these nanobots? Well, that would, that would really take an awful lot of research. To those who believe that they would never do any of this because it's affecting them too, you have to understand that they have vaccines that actually work for them to protect them from all of the poisons that we are subject to. You can bet that they have ways to protect themselves from these nanobots, these nanoparticulates. They are not eating what we are eating. And they do have vaccines and ways to protect themselves, protect their health from all of the chemicals and the heavy metals that are being sprayed. So that argument certainly does not work. Anyway guys, this is, this is the new world. It's here. It has manifested. It's only going to get worse. That's the unfortunate realization that when you really look at the big picture and really understand how all of this was proliferating without our even knowing it, well, um, what else can I say but keep detoxing the heavy metals and the chemicals and considering how conductive we are from uh, all of what we have been breathing in, all of the heavy metals. 
that making us far more conductive and then easily controlled by the microwave frequencies, well, we are left with now living a life of, of daily detoxing and trying to keep our immune systems as strong as possible. But all of this stuff is really now saturated, not just in our country, but in other countries. The United States has been truly hit on every level. And we know that governments in other countries like the EU and, and Denmark and France and um, they have been taking measures. So their poisons and their uh, technology has been, there's been a certain oversight that they had that we don't. We have no oversight to any of this technology. They're rolling it out without any safety studies like 5G, the millimeter wave that is being rolled out very, very fast. We heard our former um, FCC chairman say, we're rolling this out without any safety studies. And the American public said nothing about it. So, but we have been hit with everything. Our food supply has been taken over by GMOs. We have nanoparticulates in our foods. We have been breathing in chemicals, heavy metals, nanobots. We're getting hit with an awful lot of weather modification, uh, hurricanes and fires, radiation from Fukushima. The list is long. All of the psychiatric medications, the United States takes more pain medicine and more psychiatric medicine than any any other people in any other country in the world. Our medical system is gone. Every institution is corrupt. Everything's about money. Nothing is about safety or providing us with um, anything that we could even re remotely, anything that remotely s compares to any health anymore. We're, we're, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's just sad. That's all I can say.